Hey everyone, Winston here, and I just passed D102 Financial Accounting at WGU. So this one took me a while. I'm not gonna lie, I started it in mid-April, and I've been struggling with it until now, and I think today is June 15th. So this one took me like a good month and a half, two months, just to digest all the content and work through. With that being said, um, I know a lot of people, they can finish it in like six days, three days or whatever, but that wasn't my case at all. Um, I did have experience with accounting. I took it at my prior college and some accounting classes in high school, and this one still was tough for me. But what I have to say is now that I took this class and passed it, I set the foundation for my accounting major. So anything after this, the deed is done, the foundation is set, I know the concepts of accounting. So that's what I really took from this class and I'm kind of gonna change up the videos a little more. Instead of just me rambling, I'm still gonna ramble, but I'm gonna take it to my computer back here and I'm gonna go over key concepts and things you should study so you can get a better chance of passing your first time. And also um, with this mind map that I'm about to show you, I'm gonna put it in the description completely free for you guys so you can study and use it however you please. I just think it was really helpful for me. Um, my course instructor and I, we worked on our study guide because I was on my third attempt and we put this together and it really helped me pass. So yeah, let's jump to the computer and I'll see you there. All right, guys. So I'm just gonna do a brief overview of this and touch on the main points in D102 Principles of Accounting. Um, like I said earlier, you can find this in the description, download it, and study it all you want. Um, so like I said, uh, this is a study guide that my course instructor and I went over, and this is after two of attempts of the exam, and I was on my third, and she said, hey, why don't you study these topics, really nail them down, and you should be good to go. So here's a full look of it and we're just gonna start on the right side and work our way around. So here we're gonna make sure to check on module seven, closing the income statement. That's a big one. We have an Excel portion where we're going to have a post-close trial balance and we're gonna close out all the nominal accounts which are the temporary accounts. And then we're also gonna move it over to the close close trial balance. I said that wrong earlier. We have a trial balance and then we have, after we close out the nominal balance, we are gonna close it to the trial post close trial balance, tongue twister. And here some questions are, explain the differences between a real and a nominal general ledger account. Explain how closing entries are made to the nominal general ledger accounts and explain how to post close trial balance is used to adjust the balance in retained earnings. Make sure to know that stuff. For module six, this is in order, by the way, this is all over the place because it's a mind map, but here for module six, some questions you should know or concepts you should know are how, to, uh, how the revenue recognition principle works. Um, you're gonna wanna explain the matching principle um, also explain the differences between accrual and cash basis accounting. That's really big. Make sure you know that. And explain the adjusting journal entries required to accurately close the books. So the next one we have is accounting cycle mechanics. So this is like your bread and butter, bread and butter throughout the whole course. Um, you're going to need to know uh, the rules that apply to T accounts and how to record debits and credits. You need to know what transactions affect the balance sheet, you know? So you have assets, liabilities, owner equity, those affect the balance sheet. And then on the income statement, you have the revenues, expenses, um, and the income. And that's what you need to know for accounting cycle mechanics. Moving on, we have financial statements. So for module two, you wanna know, uh, how to describe the revenue and expense general ledger accounts on an income statement. We're also gonna learn how to organize the general ledger accounts on the in income statement. Um, you wanna explain the calculation and the impact of the net income, net loss shown on the income statement. So sometimes on 
the net income it's can appear as a net loss or a net gain. Then moving on to module three, statement of cash flows. Another big one that you need to know. It's the first couple questions in the OA. So make sure to nail this one down. Um, you're going to describe the three main activities of the uh, cash flow statement. And that's operating, financing, and investing activities. Then you're also going to need to know how to or how the company sources and uses those cash flows. And then I have a chart in here that's really helpful. Like my course instructor pointed this out when I was talking of her. Please just memorize this thing if you're going to memorize something in the cash flow financial statements. And you're going to know how all these uh, financial statements relate to each other. Okay, so let's go down to module eight, internal control. So a lot of people I noticed like on Reddit and Discord, they have problems with internal control, but I think it was pretty easy and straightforward. Um, it is a lot to digest and the book doesn't hit on it as much as it should, but it does take up a decent amount of your grade on the OA. So make sure you hit this on the head as hard as you can. So you want to describe the types of errors in the reporting process. You know, there can be, you know, transaction has in the wrong numbers recorded. You know, you transpose the numbers, you put 24 instead of 42. Um, you put an expense in the asset column. That's going to be something that you should pay attention to. And also, it's another it's another question on the OA. You want to know if you place an expense in the asset column or you place something in the wrong column, how does it affect the income statement and the balance sheet? Also, you want to know the different types of internal controls. There's preventative and detective. And then each one of those, they have like two or three things that you need to know, but make sure you understand that because I think it's 15% on the, I think it is 15% on the OA. So make sure you really know that and dial into that. Um, describe the business controls necessary to safeguard cash. Um, explain recon, uh, reconciling bank accounts to provide safeguards over cash. So that's like a cash register. But another thing this reminded me of is make sure you know um, how to reconcile the per book and the per bank uh, statements because there's about two or three of those questions in OA. Moving on to receivables. So we want to describe the impact of sales discounts, returns, and allowances. And then we also want to explain how to calculate the allowance for doubtful accounts. Um, I believe there's... Let me see. So you want to make sure you keep note of two types of questions is adjusting entry questions and write-off collectible. This quiz or this exam is very, very, you got to pay attention to the language as much as you can because you can easily overlook something. Module 10. So we want to describe the impact of purchase discounts, purchase returns, and purchase allowances and describe that, oh, I wrote the same thing twice. So basically know what happens to a transaction if you have a purchase discount return or an allowance. And then moving on, we have module 11, inventory, cast, inventory cost flow assumptions. So you want to describe various inventory cost flow assumptions. I know this seems very simple, but I did miss up FIFO and LIFO, I mix them around. So make sure you know a good way to determine between the both because there's two questions and they're right after each other. And if you get one wrong and then think it's the other, you'll get the other one wrong too. So that's two points I missed out on. I, I was about to have the exemplary, but I missed out on this one. So mix them up. So um, next is module 12, acquisition depreciation and disposable property. A lot of people have issues on this one because you're basically calculating depreciation. And the main two things are just straight line depreciation, which is number of years divided by one or one divided by number of years, and then double decline, which is number one divided by number of years times two, double. And there is a little more nuance to this. So I'll have you refer to the book and the quizzes because they explain how to do that. And yeah, I want to do it justice. <laughs> so uh, 
Describe when an expenditure it should be recorded as an asset and when it should be recorded as an expense. You should know that. Explain how to record a depreciation expense under the straight line method. Um, same thing. Explain how to record a depreciation expense under the double decline method. Uh, explain how to re record gains and losses upon the disposal of property, plant, and equipment. So with this one, it's going to be the same. So gains are recorded as net gains and losses as net loss. So their question is going to be like, they're going to have a selling price and they're going to give you a value and they're going to throw a lot of random numbers, but basically all you have to do is subtract the initial price from the selling price to get your, either your net profit or your net loss or net gain or net loss. Okay. Next we have module 14. Explain how to account for sales taxes and property taxes. So oh, I dropped something. There are quite a few questions about this. Um, just make sure to know that sales charge or sales tax is charged at the point of sale. So I couldn't really get this at first. So I had to ask my instructor, but let me write you down an example here. Give me one second. So you have sales tax. So you have this here. Oh, I didn't know that was going to be in reverse. But basically, you have inventory of 106000 You're going to calculate your sales tax of 6000 and then you're going to credit your 100000 of cash. So sales tax, cash, both credited because you're debiting, uh, your debiting inventory or your getting inventory, you're getting assets. Another thing you should know is DC Adler or dealer. Uh, know how to do your debit or credits because that's the foundation of everything. It doesn't matter what you use. It's just whatever sticks in your head best and whatever you can recall. Okay. And then what else do we have on this? So explain how to account for compensated absences, you know, like sick days. Explain how to account for sales taxes and property taxes. And then explain how to account for contingencies. Then I think we have two more. So module 15, long-term liabilities. The main concept for this one is you're going to need to explain the accounting for notes payable and mortgages. So make sure to double in on that double down on that. Module 16, accounting for equity transactions. So describe how to account for the issuance of common and preferred stock. You know, make sure you know about your par value and make sure you know the logistics around preferred stock, you know, which shareholders have more of a priority. Is it common or preferred stock? You know, preferred. Describe how to account for changes in retained earnings. Um, and describe to account for cash dividends. Yep, and that's it for the mind map. Like I said before, um, I'll put this in the description for you to download, but this is the overarching concept of D102. So make sure you can answer all of these questions. I think there's about like 20. I'm not sure I didn't count them, but if you can understand this as a whole, you'll be golden. Like you'll be able to pass. So I know there's a lot of things that I missed out on this because this is simply directed towards me, what I was struggling on, but this has a decent amount of the concepts you need to know that will help you pass the OA. So yes, that's my mind map for D102. As much as I hate reading textbooks, I highly suggest you read everything you can in this one. It's a lot of material, but just break it up chunk by chunk and really digest the material. Make sure to watch all the videos. Um, also additional resources they don't hurt at all i think i passed this mostly due to my discord my course instructor and a lot of tony bell videos i know people like ed spira um people like uh i think it's far hat and then there's also 
another one that was really great that got me into it is a CPA strength. Make sure to check him out too. But yeah, like I said, use all the resources you can. This is a foundational class. Um, it's not gonna come easy. You have to remember that all the classes before this one were like your gen eds and such. And this is your weed out class, you know. Are you really, do you really wanna be accountant or not? Do you really wanna get the accounting degree or no? So make sure to double down on this and work as hard as you can and study. Um, I also suggest don't just get caught up writing notes because I just have notebooks and notebooks full of just notes. I wrote probably over like 80 pages worth of notes, but you know, I still scored a 79% on the exam. What really helped for me is when I actually took the time and went through a workbook or worked through a bunch of questions and got familiar with the transactions and understood why uh, this transaction affected the income statement, why this one affected the balance sheet. You just need to know the concept overall because a lot of the times with these, quiz, uh, with these OAs, they're gonna throw you questions that if you count for it wrong, the right answer will be in the multiple choice, but they're gonna try and trip you up with the wrong one. So make sure you really understand it and make sure you don't second guess yourself. So, you know, a, a big thing for me was not understanding the expenses, always go to like a payable. And then um, not understanding that like how to cash that out or how to credit that out. But all of a sudden it kind of clicked over like over time. I can explain to you it a thousand times, but you're not gonna understand it until you write it out and actually do the transaction. So make sure to do that. Make sure to pull from all your resources, um, study a lot. I'll put some links in uh, the, the description as well for like resources that I used and pull from people. You know, there's a whole Discord out there that's just talking about whatever class you need in the accounting, uh, accounting major. There's a Facebook group as well. So, like I said, you're not alone. Study hard, and you should be able to get through this. This is a tough one, but if I can do it, you can too. Thanks, everyone. See you in the next one.